Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have got a E-Class 211 chassis with a 642 V6 CDI engine. Very popular engine in all Mercedes pretty much. We are covering a really common job on this which is a oil leak, which is oil cooler seals. Luckily, before we carried out the job, I road tested the vehicle and discovered we had more than one problem with the car. So this video is covering what I would say are the three most common issues with that engine. Um, we're also going to do the competition draw for the winner from the previous video for a hoodie. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Number 23, Michael Jordan. Number 23 is David Cowan. David Cowan? Yeah. There you go. It's horrible, that, isn't it? So that was a demonstration of a faulty turbo and the actuator kangarooing. Well, you saw the revs fluctuating. Well, in the car, it was horrendous. It's horrible. No engine management light for this fault. You usually get a fault code for exhaust back pressure sensor, which is very misleading. It's actually the turbo that's at fault. So this car's having the three main common issues that you get with a 642 engine. It is having oil cooler and seals, inlet manifold, motor, and a turbo. So this is the 642 engine, V6 diesel. So your turbo's here at the back. The oil cooler is buried in the middle of the V. It's right down there. So we're gonna to have to take multiple parts off to get to this. Um, it's not gonna be a tutorial or how to or anything. It's just showing you what's involved to get this job done. Really common job. It's a big job. And we'll show you the cause and the, the cure. So quick look underneath the car. So we've demonstrated the turbo fault is one fault second fault is the oil leak when you're inspecting them the underneath for these oil leaks it always looks like it's coming from the rear main seal the crank seal which it isn't but we've got a massive oil leak we've got a turbo issue and we're going to change the inlet motor because you've got to take that off to do the oil cooler and it's a definite while you're in their job. You've got to remove it anyway. There's no extra cost to you guys apart from the cost of the part. And then that's the three major things done. So we've only just started this job. Bloody hell, they fell off the ramp. We've only just started this job and straight away that orange seal that sits in there is knackered and the result of that is it leaks oil out and onto the inlet motor which is that part there and that leaking is what causes that to fail so that's another reason why we replace that while we're in there. All right, so John's making good progress. The intake, main intake pipe with throttle body has been removed, which would come round here. So that's gained him loads more access. He's took the fuel filter housing out. So if you have a look down there, you can see that oil that's making a mess there is from this seal here. So that will obviously be replaced at the same time. Next part to come out is the turbo. Where it snaps on camera. <laughs> <laughs> John's got the turbo off, which now pretty much exposes the inlet motor. You still can't see it the best. It's got to move the wiring loom out of the way. So that's the inlet motor that opens and closes the flaps in the inlet manifold. So we can show you that once we've got it stripped down, but it's a good job of changing that because it's absolutely drenched in oil. We, uh, a lot of people don't change that when they're doing this job. 
and they can do the job a lot cheaper because of it. I just refuse to do it because it's a really common job. It's a while you're in there. It just doesn't make sense not to at all. Imagine completing the whole job. Two months later, you're in Let Manifold's Faulty and then you've got to strip it all down again. It's not for me. So the inlet motor is out and that is what turns the inlet manifold flaps. As you can see, it's covered in oil, probably not got much life left in it. And I don't know if you can see, but that motor turns this. And as you can see, I'm turning it and the linkage rod is not moving. It's not moving at all. So we've actually got another problem there. So it, even though the motor's doing its job, it's not actually turning the linkages. So once the inlet manifolds are off, that will give us a chance to see what's going on. But these are problems that you can't predict until you get involved in the job. Lots of while you're in there. John's now got the inlet manifolds off and the oil cooler off. That's the actual oil cooler that sits in there. So that's where it's leaking from. And the problem is these little seals that seal the cooler to the block. They've just gone flat so it can leak past. And then what happens is oil leaks down that hole at the back. There's one at the back and one at the front and it leaks all the way down the back of the engine and then creates a full mess. These are the two inlet manifolds and when the motor that operates them, when it's opening and closing, this one's not turning at all. You can see the wear in the linkage there and they're not opening fully either. The rod, which would go there, is elongated. So that's why it's not moving the flap. Now, so Mercedes don't sell any form of repair when this happens. You'd have to replace the full inlet manifold. So we buy these kits online, which enable us to replace the worn out plastic components. The customer has no idea that we're gonna do this we're just doing it because we're doing it and we can do it traditionally you'd have to replace the inlet manifolds and they're a thousand pound a side and there's obviously two of them we're going to save the customer two thousand pound just carrying out this simple repair and he's not even going to know about it right so the first manifold's repaired as you can see all flaps now opening and closing new bar on new bushes bars that we put on are aluminium so they don't wear but I mean, that wear that we demonstrated before, this car's done 150,000 miles, so it's to be expected really, but that should outlast the, the car's life. These are the new seals for the oil cooler, which are purple. The old ones are orange. Where are the orange seals? Where are the orange seals? So old ones are orange, new upgraded ones are purple. So if you ever buy an oil cooler and seals online and you don't receive purple seals, don't fit them because there's something different about these. Oh, look at that. You can tell this car's not serviced by us because that's not one of our filters. We've come here for the headache job. Right, so we've got to refit the cooler. We always change the oil cooler as well. A lot of people don't. They can warp, so the last thing we want to do is do the whole job again. Twelve newton meters. There we go. That's gone. So 
So making good progress now, inlet manifolds are on, oil coolers back in which you now can't see. We need to put the swirl flap motor back in and connect it to our new linkages. Right, we've got the oil feed for the turbo on, fuel filter on, inlet motor on, intake pipe on, and we're refitting the fuel filter some more while we're in there stuff. The main pipe that goes from here to here, this one is rock hard, and you can see the inside where it's coming away. So we've changed that pipe because that would just cause a, a bad fuel leak. That's just years of it coming on and off, on and off. And this one, which goes from here to here, has had that problem before and somebody's cut it down. You can see where someone's cut it. More while we're in there stuff. Um, we actually keep a massive folder of all these different parts and seals and gaskets and it's a massive job this uh, i'll show you the folder and then uh, you can see what we do but there's lots of stuff goes on with this job that customers just don't know about organized over the years of all gaskets and seals we need um bolts different bolts that go wrong tiny little seals with all this stuff gets replaced on this job um exhaust manifold gaskets inlet motor clips it goes on and on and on it's never ending so anything that we need on this job we we'll just get it out of there what's stopping that dropping in Right, as you can see, all built back together. Got a new filter to go in, fresh coolant. Got to pour oil in the oil filter housing to prime the turbo system. It goes down really slowly, this. So whilst we're pouring oil in the filter housing just to get some oil around the system, fresh coolant. Right, we're ready to fire up the oil cooler job. We've uh, give it a couple of primes already, so let's see how we go. Nice. Right, that's the oil cooler job done, 642. I say oil cooler, it's a bit more involved than that. Hopefully that's give everyone an insight as to what's involved in that job. It's a really common job and a lot of people are gonna have had that job done or will end up having that job done. So hopefully it helps someone out along the road. Like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.